go to another part of the island. All the infections that the sun sucks up from bogs, fens, flats, on Prosper fall and make him by inch meal a disease. His spirits hear me, and yet I needs must curse. But they'll not nor pinch, fright me with urchin, shows, pinch me in the mire, nor lead me like a firebrand in the dark out of the out of my way unless he bit them but for every trifle they are set upon me sometime like apes that mow and chatter at me and bite af after bite me then like hedgehogs which lie tumbling in my barefoot way I mount their pricks at my footfall sometimes Am I all wound with adders who with cloven tongues do hiss me to madness? Lo, now lo, here comes a spirit of his and to torment me for bringing wood in slowly. I'll, I'll fall flat, perchance he will not mind me. Here's neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all, and another storm brewing. I hear it sing it is wind, it's yon same black cloud, yon huge one, looks like a foul bombard that would shed his liquor. If it should thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Yon same cloud cannot choose but fall by painfuls. What have we here? A man or a fish? Dead or alive? A fish. He smells like a fish. A very ancient and fish-like smell. A kind of nod of the newest poor John. A strange fish. Were I in England now, as once I was, and had but this fish painted, not a holiday full there, but would give a piece of silver, there would this monster make a man, any strange beast there makes a man, when a, when men, any strange beast there makes a man, when they will not give a do it to relieve a lame beggar, they will lay out tent to see a dead Indian legged like a man and his fin like arms warm. Oh my troth, I do now let loose my opinion. Hold it no longer, this is no fish, but an islander that hath lately suffer by thunderbolt. Alas, the storm is come again. My best way to is to creep under his gabardin. There is no other shelter here about misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. I will hear shrug till the dregs of the storm be past. I will no more to see, to see, how shall I die on the shore? And this is very search to do, sing at a man's funeral. Well, there's my comfort. <laughs> oops, oops. Ah. The master and the swabber and the bosom and the banner and his mate. Love Mall, Meg and Marion and Marjorie, but none of them cared for fate. <laughs> and she had a tongue with the tang, who would say to the sailor, Go hang! <laughs> and uh, she loved all the savor of tar nor pitch. She, Taylor, would scratch her where she did itch. <laughs> and then to see, boys, and let her go hang. And there's a scurvy tune, too. And there's my comfort. Mah.
Do not torment me! Oh! 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 What's the matter? Oh! Ha! 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 The devil's here? Do you t put tricks upon us with savages and men of Indy? Oh! I have not escaped drowning to be a feared one now for your four legs and had hath been said as proper a man as over went on four legs cannot make his give ground and yet he said so again while Stefano breathes at nostrils the spirit torments me oh, oh there is some monster in this uh, in this little with four legs who has got, as I take it, an egg. Oh, there's the devil with his learned outdoor language. Oh, I will give him some relief, and he shall but for that. Ah, uh, but I can, I can recover him and keep him a tune and get to Naples with him. He's a present for any emperor and never trod on meat's shoulder. Do not torment me. Really? I'll bring my wood home faster. <laughs> He's in his fit now. <laughs> and uh, does not talk after the wizard, uh, the wisest. He has a taste in his bottle. <laughs> and if he had never drunk wine before, it would go so near to remove his fit. If I can recover him and keep him tame, I will not take the much for him, and he shall pay for him that hath him, and that soundly. Thou dost me yet but little hurt. Thou wilt anon. I know it by thy trembling. Now prosper works upon thee. Come on your ways, open your mouth. Here is that which will give you language to you. And uh, eat, open your mouth, and uh, this will shake your shaking. I can tell you that, and that soundly, that you cannot tell who is your friend. Open your chaps again. I should know that voice. It should be, but he is frowned, and these are devils. Oh, defend me. Four legs and two voices. A most delicate monster. Oh, his forward voice now is to speak well of his friend. His backward voice <laughs> is to utter foul speeches and to detract. If all the wine in my bottle would recover him, I will help his ache. Uh, come, amen. I will pour some into the other mouth. Stefano! Ah! Oh! Thou, oh, thou dost the other mouth call me. Oh, mercy, mercy, this is a devil and no monster. I will leave him and take no long spoon. <laughs> Stefano, if thou be Stefano, touch me and speak to me, for I am tranquilo. Be not, a, be not afraid, thy good friend Tranquilo. If thou beest Tranquilo, come forth. I'll, I'll pull thee by the legs here. Uh, if any be Trinkolo's legs, oh, these are they. <laughs> oh, the, thou art very Trinkolo indeed. Uh, how camest thou to be the siege of this moon cat? Uh, can he uh, vent Trinkolo's? I took him to be killed with a thunderstroke, but art thou not drowned, Stefano? I hope now thou art not drowned. Is the storm overblown? I hid my, hid me under the dead moon kelps, 
Gabardine for fear of the storm. And art thou living, Stefano? Oh, Stefano, two Neapolitans escaped. Ha, ha, ha. Pretty, do not turn me about. My stomach is not constant. Be fine things. And if they be not sprites, that's a brave god and bears celestial liquor. I will kneel to him. Oh, how dost thou escape? Oh, thou camest thou hither, and swear by this bottle how thou camest thither. I escaped by a butt of sack, and uh, which the sailors heaved overboard, and by this bottle which I made of the bark of a tree with mine own hands, and since I was cast ashore. I'll swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject. For the liquor is not earthly. Here, swear then, and how thou escapest. Swum ashore, a man like a duck. I can swim like a duck. I will be a, a sworn. Uh-huh. Well, here, kiss the book. <laughs> And uh, though thou be canst be swim like a duck, thou art made like a goose. <laughs> oh, Stefano, hast any more of this? No, well, I, the whole butt, man, my cellar is in the rock by the seaside where my wine is hid. Now, how now, Mooncalf, how dost thy I, I ache? Hast thou not dropped from heaven? Oh, out of the moon, I assure you. I was the man in the moon when time was. I have seen thee in her, and I do adore thee. My mistress showed me thee, and thy dog, and thy brush. On the bush, too, yes. Well, the came swear to that. And kiss the book. I will furnish it anon with new contents. I swear. By this good light, this is very shallow monster. I afraid of him. A very weak monster. The man I the moon. The most poor credulous credulous. Monster, well-drawn monster in good smooth. I'll show Suit. thee. I'll show thee every fertile inch of the island. I will kiss thy foot. I pray thee, be my god. By this light, a most perfidious and drunken monster, when he's got asleep, he will rob his bottle. I'll kiss thy foot. I'll swear myself thy subject. Come on, then, come on, come on down and swear. I shall laugh myself to death at this puppy-headed monster, a monster scurvy monster I could find in my heart to beat him. Ah, uh, uh, come, kiss. But that the poor monsters in drink un abominable monster. I'll show thee the best springs. I'll pluck thee berries. I'll fish for thee. I'll get thee wood enough. I'll plague upon the tyrant that I serve. I bear him no more sticks, but follow thee, thou wondrous man. A most ridiculous monster to make a wonder of a poor drunkard. I prithee, let me bring thee where crabs grow, and I, with my long nails, will dig thee pig nuts. I'll show thee a jay's nest, and instruct thee how to snare the nimblest mara's mom set. I'll bring thee to clustering filberts, and sometimes I'll give thee young scamrels from the rock. Will thou go with me? 
I pray thee now lead the way, and without any more talking, drink low, the king and all our company, else had been drowned, we will inherit here. And here, uh, bear my bottle. And fellow Trinculo, we will fill him by and by again. <laughs> farewell, master. Farewell, master. Farewell. A howling monster, a drunken monster. <laughs> For them, I'll make the fish, I'll no fetch in fiery. At requiring no scrape trencher, no wash dish, ban ban calab ala kalaban. Has a new master, get a new man. Freedom, hey day, hey day, freedom, freedom, hey day, freedom. Oh, brave monster, lead the way. So we start Act Three, Scene One. We're outside Prospero's cell. There be some sports are painful, and their labor delight in them sets off. Some kinds of baseness are noble undergone, and most poor matters point to rich ends. This, my mean task, would be as heavy to me as odious, but the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labors pleasures. Oh, she is 10 times more gentle than her father's crabbed, and he's composed of harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up upon a sore injunction. My sweet mistress weeps while she sees me work and says such baseness have never like executor. I forget, but these sweet thoughts do even refresh my labors most busy lest yet when I, when I do it. Alas now, pray you, work not so hard, I would the lighting Burnt up those logs that you are enjoined to pile. Pray, set it down and rest you. When this burns for weak for having wearied you, my father is hard at study. Pray now, rest yourself. Be safe for these three hours. O oh, most dear mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. If you'll sit down, I'll bear your logs the while. Pray. Give me that, I'll carry it to the pile. Oh, no, precious creature. I had rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. It would become me as well as it does you, and I should do it with much more ease, for my goodwill it is to it, and yours it is against. O oh, worm, thou art infected. This visitation shows it. You look wearily. No, noble mistress, tis fresh morning in me, when you are by at night. I do beseech you chiefly that I may set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda, oh my father, I have broke your hest to say so. Admired Miranda, indeed the top of admiration, worth what's dearest to the world. Full many a lady I have eyed with best regard, and many a time the harmony of their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. For several virtues have I liked several women, never any with such, with so fun soul, but some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed and put it to the foil. But you, oh you, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best. I do not know one of my sex. No woman's face, remember, save mm -hmm. from my glass, mine mm -hmm. own. Nor I have seen mm -hmm. more that I may call men than you. Good friend and my dear father, how features are abroad, abroad I am skillless of, but by my modesty, the jewel in my dower, I would not wish any companion in the world but you, nor can imagination form a shape besides yourself too like of, but I prattle something too wildly and my father's precepts I therein do forget. I am in my condition a prince, Miranda. I do think a king. I would not so, and would no more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh fly blow my mouth. 
hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you, did my heart fly to your service. There resides to make me slave to it. And for your sake, am I this patient log man? Do you love me? Oh, heaven, oh, earth, bear witness to this sound and crown what I profess with kind event if I speak true. If hollowly, invert what best is boded me to mischief. I, beyond all limit of what else in the world, do love, prize, and honor you. I am a fool to weep at what I'm glad of. Fair encounter of two most rare affections. Heavens reign grace on that which Reads between them. Wherefore weep you? At mine unworthiness that dare not offer what I desire to give and much less take what I shall die to want. But this is trifling and all the more it seeks to hide itself. The bigger bulk it shows. Hence, bashful cunning and prompt me plain and holy innocence. I am your wife. If you will marry me, if not, I'll die your maid. To be your fellow, you may deny me, but I'll be your servant, whether you will or no. My mistress, dearest, and I thus humble ever. My husband, then? I, with a heart as willing as bondage heir of freedom. Here's my hand. And mine, with my heart in it, and now farewell till half an hour hence. A thousand, thousand. So glad of this as they cannot be who are surprised with all. But my rejoicing at nothing can be more. I'll to my book, for yet ere supper time must I perform much business appertaining. Scene two. Tell me, tell not me what the butt is out. We will drink water, not a drop before, and therefore best up <laughs> and board and boredom. Servant monster, drink to the drink to me. Servant monster, the folly of this island. They say there is but five upon this isle. We are three of them. If the other two be branded like us, the state totters. Oh, drink, servant monster. And when I bid thee, thy eyes are almost set in thy head. <laughs> Where should they be set else? You were a brave monster indeed, if they were set in his tail. Oh, my man monster hath drowned his tongue in sack, and for my part, the sea cannot drown me. I swam, and ere I could recover the shore, and five and thirty leagues off and on by this light, thou shalt be my lieutenant, monster, or my standard. Your lieutenant, if you <laughs> list, he's no standard. Ah, will not run, Monsieur Monster. Nor go neither, but you will lie like dogs and yet say nothing neither. Well, man, calf, speak once in thy life, and if thou beest a good moon calf. How does thy honor? Let me lick thy shoe. I'll not serve him. He is not valiant. Thou liest most ignorant monster. I'm in case to just a constable. Why thou debauched fish thou? Was there ever a coward that hath drunk so much sack? as I today. Wilt thou tell a monstrous lie, being but half fish and half a monster? Lo, how he mocks me! Wilt thou let him, my lord? Lord, quoth he, that a monster should be such a natural. Lo, lo, again! Bite him to death, I prithee. 
Trunkylope, uh, keep a good tongue in your head. If you prove a mutineer, the next tree and the uh, more monsters, my subject, he shall not suffer indig indignity. I thank my noble lord. Wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit I made for to thee? Uh, Mary, will I? Uh, I kneel and uh, repeat it. I will stand, and so shall Trinculo. As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer, and by his cunning he hath cheated me of the island. Thou liest. Thou liest, thou jesting monkey thou. I would my valiant master would destroy thee. I do not lie. Trinculo, if you trouble him any more in this tale, I by this hand, I will supplant some of your teeth. Why, I said nothing. <laughs> A mountain then, and no mark, no more. Proceed. I say, by sorcery, he got this isle. From me, he got it. If thy greatness will be revenge it on him, for I know thou darest, but this thing dare not. That's most certain. Thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. How oh, now shall thee be compassed? Uh, canst thou bring me to the party? Ay, 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 my lord. I'll yield him thee asleep where thou mayst knock a nail into his head. Thou liest, thou canst not. What oh, oh. ninny is this? Thou scurvy patch, I do beseech thy greatness. Give him blows and take his bottle from him. When that's gone, he shall drink naught but brine, for I'll not show him where the quick wretches are. Frank, hello. run into the further danger. Interrupt the monster one word further, and by this hand I'll turn my mercy out of doors and make a stock fish out of thee. Why, what did I? I did nothing. I'll go further off. Didst thou not say he lied? Thou liest. Do I so? Uh, takes thou the I that, yes, and you like this, give me the lie another time. I did not give the lie out of oh, your wits and hearing too. Oh, fox, oh, you bottle. This can sack and drinking do a oh, Marion. On your monster and the devil, take your fingers. <laughs> well, never forth uh, with your tail. Uh, Prithee, stand further off. Beat him enough. After a little time, I'll beat him too. Stand further. Come, proceed. Why, as I told thee, tis a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. There thou mayst brain him. Having first seized his books, or with a log, batter his skull, or punch him with a snake, or cut his wizened with a knife. Remember, first to possess his books, for without them he is but a sot, as I am, or nor hath not one spirit to command. They all do hate him as rootedly as I. Burn his books. He has brave utensils, for so he calls them, which then he has a house. He'll deck with all, and that most deeply to consider is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her non peria. I never saw a woman, oh, but only Sycorax, my dam, and she but she, as far as surpasses Sycorax, as greatest does least. Is it so, a prey, alas? Aye, Lord, 
she will become thy bed, I warrant, and bring thee forth brave brood. A monster, I will kill this man, this um, daughter, and will be king and queen, uh, save thee graces, and uh, Trinculo and thyself shall be viceroys, and thou take the plot, Trinculo. Excellent. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, well, give me thy hand. I am sorry I beat thee, but while thou lewest, give a good tongue in thy head. Within this half hour, he will be asleep. Wilt thou destroy him then? I, on mine honors. This will I tell my master. <laughs> thou makest me merry. I am full of pleasure. Let us be jocund. Will you troll the cat you taught me, but while air? <laughs> At thy request, monster, I will do reason. Uh, say re reason. <clears throat> Come on now, uh, Trinkolo, let us sing. Flout him and scout him and scout him and flout him and he was to be the broadest tree. That's not a tune. That's not the tune. Well, th th this is the same. This is the tune of our catch, played by the picture of nobody. <laughs> and if thou beest a man, thou showest thyself in thy likeliest. And if thou be a devil, takest thou list. Oh, forgive me my sins. <laughs> he that dies pays all debts. I defy thee, uh, mercy upon us. Art thou feared? Feared? Uh, no, monster, not I. Be not a feared. The <laughs> isle is full of noises. Oh. Sounds and sweet airs that give oh. delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will oh. hum about mine ears, oh. and sometimes voices that, yes. if I then had waked after a long sleep, will make me sleep again. And then, in dreaming, the clouds, methought, would open and show riches ready to drop upon me that when I waked, I cried to dream again. This will prove a brave kingdom to me where I shall have my music for nothing. When Prospero is destroyed. That shall be by and by, and I'll remember the story. The sound is going away. Let's follow it, and after, do our work. Oh, lead, monster. We'll follow. I would I could see this laborer. He lays it on. I will okay. follow Stefano. Now we are back to Gonzalo and another part of the island. How many parts are there to this island? Anybody got any guess? By a yakin, I can go no further, sir, and my own bones ache. Here's a maze trod, and indeed, so though forthrights and uh, meanders by your patience, I needs must rest thee. Oh, Lord, I cannot blame thee, who am myself attached with weariness and, uh, uh, and the duffing of my spirits. Sit down and rest. Even here, I will put off my hope and keep it uh, no longer to my flatterer. He is drowned, who thus uh, we stray to find. And the sea mocks our frustrate search on land. Well, let him go. I am right glad that he's so out of hope. Do not, for one repulse, forego the purpose that you resolved to effect. The next advantage we will take thoroughly let it be tonight, for now they are oppressed with travel. They will not nor cannot use such vigilance as when they are fresh. I say, tonight, the war. 
wait, what, what, what harmony is this? My good friends, hark! Oh, marvelous, sweet music! Give us kind keepers, heavens. What were these? A living dollary. Now I will believe that there are unicorns. That in Arabia there is one tree, the phoenix throne, one phoenix, and at this hour reigning there. I'll believe both. And what does else want credit come to me, and I'll be sworn tis true. Travelers ne'er did lie, though fools at home condemn them. If in Naples I should report this now, they would not believe me. And uh, if I should say I saw such islanders, uh, for certes, they are people of the island who, though they are of monstrous shape, and yet note their manners are more gentle kind than of our na human na generation, you shall find nay name almost any. On this board thou hast said well, for some of you there present are worse than devils. I had not too much muse, such shapes, such gestures, and such sound expressing, although they want the use of tongue, a kind of excellent dumb discourse. Praise in departing. Faith, sir, you need not fear. And when we were boys, we would believe that there were mountaineers uh, do lapped by oh. like bulls, and whose throats had hanging on yeah. at them wallets of flesh, or that there were such men that had all the uh, whose heads have, uh, stood on their breasts, which now we find each put her out of five for, for one will bring us good warrant of. I will stand too and feed, although my last, no matter, uh, since I feel the, the best is past. Brother, m my lord, the duke, stand too and do as we. You are three men of sin. Whom destiny hath had that hath to instrument this lower world and what is in the never surfeited sea hath caused to belch up you. And on this island where man doth not inhabit, you amongst men being most unfit to live. I have made you mad. And even with such like valor, men hang and drown their proper selves. You fools! I and my fellows are ministers of fate. The elements of whom your swords are tempered may as well wound the loud winds, or be mock at stabs kill the still closing waters, as diminish one dowel that's in my plume. My fellow ministers are like invulnerable. If you could hurt, your swords are now too massy for your strengths and will not be uplifted. But remember, for that's my business to you, that you three from Milan did supplant good Prospero, exposed unto the sea who hath requit it him and his innocent child, for which foul deeds the powers delaying, not forgetting, have incensed the seas and shores, yea, all the creatures against your peace. Be of thy son, Alonso, they have left, they have bereft, and do pronounce by me. Lingering perdition, worse than any death can be at once, shall step by step attend you and your ways, whose wrath to guard you from, which here in this most desolate isle else falls upon your heads, is nothing but heart sorrow and a clear life ensuing. Bravely, the figure of this harpy hast thou performed, my Ariel. A grace is now the powering of my instruction hast thou nothing baited in what thou hast. So, with good likes and observation strange, my meaner ministers their several kinds have done. My high charm work and thee, mine enemies, are all knit up in their distractions. 
They are now in my power, and in these pits I leave them, while I visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose is drowned, and his and my loved darling. In the name of something holy, sir, why stand you in this strange stare? Oh, it is monstrous, monstrous! Methought the billet spoke and told me of it. The winds did sing it to me. And the thunder, that deep and dreadful organ pipe, pronounced the name of Prosper. It did base my trespass, and therefore my son in the ooze is bedded. And I'll seek him deeper than e'er plummeted sounded, and with him there lie muttered. But one fiend at a time. I'll fight their legions, or I'll be thy second. All three of them are desperate, and their great guilt, like poison given to work a great time after, now begins to bite the spirits. And I do beseech you, there are suppliers' joints, and follow them swiftly, and hinder them from what the ecstasy may now provoke them on. Follow, I pray you. Act four, let's take a real quick break and we'll have a brand new Prospero. This man, he lived in uh, churchyards and that sort of thing. He even lived in the back of uh, uh, Manoa Valley in uh, the McDonald's back there. Wearing a tuxedo. He wore a tuxedo. Uh, it usually was not the same pants that went with it. But um, he came to read with us a couple of times when we were at uh, Barnes & Noble. But I think he liked to just listen more so than, uh, than read with us. I bet you Mike remembers the Tuxedo Man. Yes. Yeah, I think he was on Tuxedo Junction, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Yeah, well, that's all right. We'll excuse you. <laughs> Get back off on the Glenn Miller horse. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, wait a minute. Mikey. I gotta get something. Get you right back. Mikey. Yeah. Do you remember the Tuxedo Man? Yes, the homeless that, guy. Yes. And he uh, passed away in June, I think it was. Really? And uh, he had a name and everything, and he was quite intelligent. I think the Honolulu Magazine has an article about him. Uh, the picture that I saw on Facebook was a picture of a, a tuxedo hanging on a hanger. Oh. So that was, that was his uh, modus operandi. But he was he, always at a uh, computer at the uh, UH library, and uh, he spoke well, very nice. Well, they, you, they usually only give you one hour to do your business, and then you got to get off the computer. But maybe somehow he um, he was a student or something. Like that. But but well, yeah, he was really smart, and he came and read with us at Barnes and Noble. Yes, he did. Right? Yeah, and yeah. I couldn't remember if he read or if he just listened. Uh, yeah, I can't remember either. Yeah. I remember he uh, definitely put me in my place with his rapier-like wit one time. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Uh, I can't remember the exact thing, but uh, somehow he just, you know, uh, it took me like... 20 minutes to figure out what he meant, but I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he does that. He did that with everyone. He was smarter than most of us, you know. Oh, geez, he was sharp as a tack. You, know, you could you could see why he was homeless because he, you know, wouldn't be long before you'd lose patience with somebody like that. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the last that he had done, you know, the little church as you go into the entrance at Midpack 
off of uh, university. Yeah, yeah. I forget, was that a Catholic church or something? Anyway, he stayed there on the lanai, uh, and that's where the priest found him uh, the day after he died in his sleep. So it's quite an article in the Honolulu Magazine, I think. If nothing else, Richard McPherson was the one, believe it or not, all, all the way from the mainland wrote about him. And so that, that's what surprised me, rather than uh, someone local had written about him. But there he well, was. What did, what did Richard write about him? Well, he just published that, uh, that article that was in the Honolulu Magazine and oh. just went on and on and on. Uh, about different people who had met with him and and uh, either had a conversation with him or something like that. And Daniel, you probably remember him. I do. And I you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tuxedo Man is what I known, had known him as. But his last name was Petri, as in a Petri dish, which is very uh, apropos for his... <laughs> for his scientific knowledge and uh